there's some of us this morning who may be going through some kind of pit experience and you're wondering how long am i going to be here for the truth be told is that you are going through and surviving what somebody else did not survive uh, yeah if somebody went through half of what you've been through in your lifetime they probably will be six feet beneath the soil why they are not wired to go through what you're going through you are welcome to a great moment in destiny god is about to speak directly to you and the message coming right up is crafted by heaven not just to challenge you but to align your destiny as you embrace divine instruction, expect that God's Word is bringing about revival, healing, restoration, and transformation to your entire life. With faith in your heart and great expectation, join me and receive God's Word through His choice vessel, Good Heart Obi Equeme. Genesis 39 verse 2. Wow, my heart is full. We're going to have a party this morning. Genesis 39 verse 2, I want to read from the Amplified Classic. But the Lord was with Joseph. The Lord was with Joseph and he, though a slave, though a slave, was a successful and prosperous man and he was in the house of his master the Egyptian we may interject he was a slave and a servant in the house of his master hmm. yet he was both successful at the same time, prosperous. Oh boy. His environment naturally did not warrant his experience. But it is true that God does not consider our environment to bless us. As a matter of fact, there are times God will bless us that our environment will be dialectically opposing to what he's doing in our lives for the singular reason for us to witness to others that he is God indeed and I want to believe that God will do in our lives in this season strange things that will not reflect to our economy your amen needs revival that means you can be in a nation like this where the dollar is close to 800 to 1 and the pound is close to 8,000 to 1. Yet in the midst of a difficult economy, still prosper. It is possible. For an assignment this morning, the prosperous man. Father, once again, we thank you for the honor to be here. I beseech you again. To take a coal of fire from the altar of heaven. Place upon my lips and my tongues of clay that this morning I will speak to these men on site and online. Your very counsel. We trust you to move us forward. Advance us. We give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before we even consider in a more extensive way what it means to be a prosperous man. We want to look at the picture of this man called Josh, Joseph and see some of the things that made him earn the title of being a prosperous man. As I said earlier, uh, his environment did not look like it. He was a slave. He was a servant. Yet, he was labeled as a man who got prospered. Saints, it is true that prosperity does not necessarily have to be defined 
with the trappings of materiality, money, what we call success. Because the Bible called, declared in Luke 12, 15, the words of Jesus Christ, that a man's life is not measured by his wealth or by his property. I'm paraphrasing now. A man's wealth is not measured by the abundance of the things he has. And we begin to see all through scriptures that God gives us examples to follow, to emulate. When you think of a man who encountered God and wrestled with God to the point where his name changed, you think of Jacob. If you desire a change of your name, a change of your destiny, then you must look at a template of a man called Jacob and learn how to be resilient, how to maintain staying power, how not to let go. You look at a man called Abraham, a man who was old, called by God to be a father of nations. You think a man who walked in faith, a man who was called the father of faith. You want to walk in faith. You go to the man as an example who was called the father of faith. You look at a man called a David, a man who was described as a man after God's heart. You want to learn what it means to walk in intimacy with God, walk in a close dimension with God, you go to David. But here we see a man called Joseph, addressed as a prosperous man. There must be something about the life of Joseph. Now, one of the things we see about Joseph was this. We're told that God was with Joseph. God was with Joseph. God was with Joseph when he was thrown into the pit in the first instance. P1, the pit. That's how come by divine providence... The right people bought Joseph, the Midianite. They bought Joseph. And the right person sold, or rather bought, bought Joseph from the Midianites, the Potiphar. He was a servant of Potiphar. And when Joseph was unfortunately thrown into the prison, he was thrown to the right prison. Still in prison. So P1, the pit. P2, Potiphar's house. P3, the prison. P4, the palace. So in all of Joseph's journey, to the point where we may wonder what is happening to the life of the dreamer. I thought you dreamt that you're going to be the king. You said you saw the stars bow down to you. You saw the sun and the moon bow down to you. But here you are. You're in the pit. But even in the pit, Joseph could have been adjudged as a successful man in the pit. Why? God was with him. By, by the virtue of the hand of God upon Joseph, in the pit, he prospered. So even in the pit, Seemingly, as difficult as life has been to you, you're alive. You're alive. You survived it. Survived COVID-19. You survived cancer. You survived loneliness. Survived delays. Survived prolonged waiting for your marriage. You survived. And the truth is, as long as you have the breath of life, you have a guarantee that tomorrow will be better. The Bible declares to he or she who is joined to all living, there is hope. Because a living dog is better than a dead lion. You survived. You're still standing in the game of life. May not be driving a limousine, flying a private jet, cruising on some, some, some ocean liner. But yet, you survive, you are alive. You can breathe in and breathe out. And life is not for the dead, life is for the living. As long as you are alive, the Bible tells me and you, your future, how do I know? The path of the just man shines brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter, even to the day of perfection. Tell your neighbor, it's getting better with Jesus. I may be in the pit, but I'm a prosperous man in the pit. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory to God. I may be a servant in the house of my master, but I'm prosperous. Why? God is with me. Buhari may not be with you. Jagaban may not be with you. Obedient may not be with you. 
articulate, but guess what? God is with us. Hallelujah. In the pit, he's with you. In the uh, 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 prison, in, in the slave house, he's with you. But guess what? If you ever go to a prison, he said, I will be with you. Why? We have the assurance, he said to us, he will never, never, yeah, blah, blah, never leave us nor forsake us. So I want to tell you, one of the greatest key of prosperity is for God to be with you. Before we advance, God to be with you. Hallelujah to Jesus. There are two spiritual forces I want to address. Number one is called the anointing. The anointing. And these spiritual forces, they have a physical effect. The anointing. What is the anointing? Isaiah 10, 27 says that it is the anointing that breaks the yoke. It is the anointing that lifts burdens. All right, all right. So we can define the anointing, hear this now, as the yoke destroying, burden lifting power of God. That's the anointing. So the anointing attacks yokes it attacks burdens. Hebrews 10.38 How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with what? With the Holy Ghost and with power. Resultant, he went about doing good, healing all who were sick and oppressed by the devil. Hi so the anointing is a yoke attacker, is a burden lifter. So, it is a spiritual force, but listen, it has a material, physical effect. Praise God, somebody. If there is anybody under the sound of my voice, you're laboring under any kind of yoke, burden, bondage, chains, fetters, but the virtue of the anointing going forth this morning, such yokes have been attacked. Oh, come on, shout a big amen. Psalm 10720, Jesus said, He sent His, or God said, I beg your pardon, He sent His word, His word healed them and delivered them from all of their destruction. So the word of God carries the anointing. All right, somebody. So the other force I want to talk about is what the Bible calls the blessing. Ah, yeah. The blessing. The blessing is a spiritual force. <laughs> But the blessing has a resultant physical effect. Jacob valued the blessing of the father. Esau despised the blessing of the father. Esau sold out the blessing. He sold out the inheritance. And Jacob fought for the blessing. And Jacob fought for the inheritance. What is the blessing? Hiya. The blessing is the empowerment to prosper. Yeah. It is what comes upon you, though invisible force, but it has a natural effect. The blessing. The blessing. I remember a point in time in my journey with God, the Lord led me to go to see my biological father then, now gone on to glory. The late Dr. Alex Equipment, by the way. He came to one of his visits in Abuja. He used to stay in the Hilton. And the Lord led me specifically to go to him. Little did I know he was just years away to dine. To take a seed, a check, very reasonable. Some zeros with it. A bottle of oil. And I literally hijacked him in his hotel room. I said, hey, Dad, I've come. So what are you doing? He said, the Lord led me to you. This all I've prayed over to give it to you to anoint me and to pray for me. And I have a gift for you here. He was shocked. I knelt down. He spoke a word of blessing over my life. <laughs> I knew something jumped on me. I knew something jumped on me. You know why? Words are not just words. Words are powerful. When a father says you will do well, no devil will stop you. 
the blessing of a father. Biological. Spiritual. And in later years again, I had served in the ministry for 21 years and the Lord knocked on my door and said, my time is up. I said, no, you must be joking. It must be the devil. I'm about to enter into rest. He said, no, no, your time is up. It was crisis moment in my life. I think my biggest crisis in 50 plus years to live there. Again, the Lord led me to him to tell him what God said to me. And I met him again. And then I thought with his intellectual mind, he would dissuade me and think they are doing me from the village. That's what I thought. A man of seven degrees, earned, not honorary. Classic law, architecture, town planning, I mean, seven. So I thought he would say, my guy, you've labored for 21 years here, you must be joking. But you know what? He rose from his bed where he was lying down and said, by the way, the last teaching they had in their church had to do with Abraham. How God told, <laughs> he was now teaching me, how God told Abraham to leave his comfort zone to go to a place yet to know by himself. And he left. And he said to me, son, I believe you. You will do well. Doc, from that point in time, I knew any battle I would face, I don't win. I had a father's blessing, you would do well. I went through hell. Oh, I saw, I saw things unimaginable. But I knew I was carrying the blessing. Ah, yeah. You see, the blessing will work in the valley. The blessing will work on the mountain. The blessing will work in America. For those who are Japan, it will work in Nigeria. It's a blessing. The blessing is not restricted to environment. Ah, yeah. I want to drive this point home. That Joseph prospered as a slave. Why? God was with him. So my question to us today is, is God with you? Is God with me? If God is with me, then we're on our way to prospering. Hallelujah. Now, what is a blessing? Proverbs 10, 22. The blessing, please listen, of the Lord, it maketh rich and he addeth no sorrow with it. So, the blessing makes something. Oh yeah, please track with me. The blessing is a source. Listen. Riches. I believe that when Jesus spoke the word. I believe that fish. Which normally are at the far deep end of the sea. At the instance of the prophetic word. They began to swim from deep. And began to swim towards where Simon Peter was. As he cast his net, we were told the net was so heavy, it was about to break. Was that not the place we've gone ahead? My God. I, I, and I, I decree and declare over you by the mercy, by the grace of God. In the same place where you toiled and labored, you were refused, rejected, denied. But the virtue of the mercy and the grace of God, you will get a boot sinking catch. You will get a net breaking catch. And the instance of the prophetic word going forth now, your fishes, they're swimming in your direction. The doors that were hitherto shut by the finger of favor that is far more powerful than labor. Get your catch. Net breaking. Boat sinking. More than enough. The Bible de declared that kind of blessing as pressed down. Shaking together. Running over. That's the kind of harvest that is coming your way. Men of honor in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Look at this. Seek first the kingdom of God 
his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. What are they? The things the Gentiles are pulling their hair over. House, car, chin, 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 breakthrough. Uh, uh. No be so. No be so. It's not like that. You see, let me buttress this point again. Psalm 23 is a psalm of the shepherd. Verse 1 says, the Lord is my shepherd. Verse 6 says, surely, haya, surely, unmistakably, as long as you and I make Jesus our what? Shepherd. You have a surely. What's a surely? Goodness. Haya. Mercy. Power twins. You won't follow them all. They will follow you. They will follow you. As you follow Jesus, being faithful, laboring in this great house, serving, loving, giving, guess what? Look behind you. Surely, goodness and mercy. I found my wife in the place of service. Oh yeah. 25 years ago, 26 years ago, doing what I'm doing right now, preaching, serving in Lagos as the head of a singles ministry. She joined the team. The rest is history. Church, serve it. You don't know what you find when you serve. Don't, don't serve. Don't serve for salary. Don't serve for income. If I, as a pastor, paid you a salary, that's all you're going to get. But you know what? God wants to reward you more than a human being will reward you. There are things I'm walking in today that money couldn't pay for it. In the place of service, mantles were released. Do you know what it means to speak and the God of heavens honors his word on your mouth? Money can't pay for it. You know what it means to buy your knees to pray to God and he answers you? What billion can pay for that? Because there are crisis moments that people will face that money cannot solve it. So therefore, prosperity as far as the kingdom is concerned is more than money. Yeah. There are problems money cannot solve. Oh, we quote the scripture. Uh, 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 money answereth all things. But we're not told whether the answer money gives is right or wrong. It gives an answer. I'll give an example. A multi-billionaire politician stolen half of Nigeria's money who is languishing in some hospital. Cancer is eating up his flesh. He has all the billions and the billions attempt to answer by sending him to the best of world-renowned hospitals, Mayo Clinic, London Clinic, yet the money gets to a point where no money can solve this matter. Now God matter. Money has answered or tried to answer, but the answer was a wrong answer. Ah, yeah. You see, oh, I feel his glory come upon me. You see, we must go beyond looking at the trappings of things to begin to look to gain power with God. When you succeed in gaining power with God, you will also automatically have power with men. Ayah. The Bible says concerning Jesus. In Luke 2.52, and Jesus grew in stature. He grew in wisdom. Guess what? He grew in favor. Don't go quickly. Before God and then before men. Don't look for favor with men before you found favor with God. Hiya. The man who has found favor with God will automatically be favored by men. If men lift you up, men will put you down. But if you wait for your divine lifting, God will lift you again. He's the God who sets down some and elevates another. <laughs> wait for his lifting. 
Wait for his lifting. People may mock you in the pit. They may mock you as a slave boy. They may mock you as an inmate in prison. But stay. The palace is only down the road. And Joseph prospered because God was with him. We move from verse 2 and 3 of Genesis 39. We go to the last three verses of Genesis 39. We find that Joseph is now in the prison. And what we begin to see is this. Because of the blessing upon him. Because of the power upon him. In prison, he became a star. The warden automatically just stepped aside and said, Joseph, though you're a prisoner, but you be the big guy here. Why? The anointing. The power. The blessing. So we go for the blessing, not for the riches of the wealth. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. Hallelujah. Let's go further this hour. <sighs> Let me make this statement you want to write down. Lasting prosperity comes when the saints make God and seeking God the priority of their heart. I want to write that down. Lasting prosperity. Wealth and riches. It comes to the saints that make God, numero uno, Seeking him, the priority of their heart. Hallelujah. Look at this interesting scripture. Psalm 112, let me read from verse 1 to 3, just to buttress this same principle. That um, wealth and riches follows those that follow Christ. Or the king and the kingdom. As they say, <laughs> follow who no road. Jesus is the way, he's the road. The way, the truth, and the life. Psalm 112, 1 to 2 says, Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighted greatly in his commandments. His seed, Aya, shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall what? Be blessed. Be blessed. Then get what happens, verse 3 now, because he's blessed. Guess what? Wealth and riches. Ah, yeah, yeah. They follow the blessing. Go for the blessing. The wealth and the riches will follow. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. And his righteousness endureth forever. Wow. Saints, I want to also lay another principle. That it is God's desire for his children to prosper. We'll soon define what prosperity is, who's a prosperous man, but suffice to know, it is God's will. Third John 2. I will that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospereth. Oh yeah. So in this case, God is saying, I want you to prosper all around. Because we are triune, three in one. You are a spirit, you have a soul, you live in a physical body. First Thessalonians 5.23, write down and go back and look at it. First Thessalonians 5.23, spirit, soul and body. He desires for us to prosper on all three levels and three realms. Spirit, soul and body. But it says here, I will that you prosper, prosper. Be in health, even as. That word as is with respect to. Track with me. To the prosperity of your soul. Oh yeah. So, the degree of your outward prosperity, please listen, is designed by God to relate commensurately to the degree of the prosperity of your soul, not spirit, soul. Hmm. As a born again child of God, in your spirit, you are very prosperous. You're a brand new creature. All things have passed away. All things have become of God. You were a chip of the old block, as it were. You were created by the spirit of the living God. So in your spirit, man, hey, 
you're done, prosperous. But the doorway to prosperity, the hinge of the door that links your spirit to outward is your soul. So God is saying, I want to keep you safe. <laughs> what do I mean? I don't want your outward prosperity to be more than your inward prosperity. Are you here? If that is the case, there will be no equilibrium. You will tilt to one side. Are you here? Oh, ah, yeah, yeah. That's what happens when somebody who is in church lands some huge breakthrough, gets into government and politics and ten cars are pursuing the guy and security guys are all over him. You know, once upon a time in GLA, this guy was broke, he was sick. We'll pray and fast for this guy. Now he's some whoever. All of a sudden, this guy fears nobody nor God, not the pastor. He will tell pastor, man of God, do you know who I am? I don't hammer, I don't land. You see, even though that man looks like he's prosperous, he's at a risk to lose his soul. This, this is serious stuff. Though seemingly outwardly, you may envy him. But that guy is possibly on the verge of losing his soul. So God said, I don't want your outward prosperity to rank higher than your inward prosperity. Ah, yeah, ah, yeah. Are you here, sir? It's deep stuff. So if your soul is number four, illustratively, prosperity, your outward should be a four. If it's seven, alarm don't blow. Pride, arrogance, they can set in. But if it is three and you're four on the inside, wait, it's a matter of time. Water will find its level. I wish I had time. So God is looking for people in the kingdom to serve as treasurers of the king. As important as what I'm doing today is to preach the gospel. It's also important that men of honor are raised to become treasurers of wealth. Hello, somebody. Oh boy, oh boy. Men who have walked with God to the point of spiritual maturity that God can entrust. Hi. He can entrust treasures in your hand and will not lose you. This is deep stuff. You see, I want to be vulnerable to you. I pray this prayer quite often and it's helped me to stay on task. God, don't leave me beyond what I can handle. That makes sense to you? Oh, one of my motives in life is slow and steady wins the race. The snail made it to the ark, Noah's ark. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I've seen too many people who were in a hurry to hammer. And they really hammered. And their souls hammered. Do you know the value of your soul? Do you know your soul is more valuable than the entire world? One soul cannot be created and can be destroyed ends in hell eternally or ends in heaven eternally as a value of a soul. Do you know a person stands the risk of losing his soul over money and mammon? This stuff is serious. I won't give my 22 year old son a car he's not trained to handle. Oh no. I love him but no, 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 no. My 12 year daughter Come and drive my car. Why? I love you and I'm rich. I'm killing you. You want to kill the girl at 12? Give her a Lexus? Give her a Benz? Why? 
you're sure you have power, you have money. You've just killed a girl. Likewise, your God knows where you are based on your heart and your soul. And he said, if I give this one, this one now, I'll be looking for you. Adam, where are you? Adam, where are you? <laughs> Adam, where are you? Adam, Adam. Imagine God looking for somebody. Adam, where, where, where is Adam? Adam, Adam, Adam where are you? <laughs> eh? so, so as men, we must pray with all humility. God, don't let the outward blessings be more than how far I've grown. And this is true in every area of our lives, including ministry. There are things called premature exposure. If a sword is unsheathed prematurely, it's dangerous. There are dimensions of ministry God will not take you into until you've grown up. Otherwise, it's casualty. So you want land, you want an estate, blah, blah, blah. God, I'm growing you. Calm down. When I see you've grown within, it will naturally follow you. The Bible says, Proverbs 132, I think it is, the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. Will you help me? Shall slay them. Thank you. Thank you. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them. <laughs> and the what? Prosperity of fools shall destroy them. And will you prosper? Be in health, even as your soul prospereth. So my responsibility in this business of striving to be prosperous is for my soul to prosper. How is it prospered? By the word. Spending time going in the spirit. Then God can entrust you with things he knows you handle as a trustee. Hiya. Let's go further. My time is really ticking. Ah, thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. What is prosperity? I quoted Luke 12, 15. Let me quote it again. Just to buttress that prosperity in the kingdom is not defined in the context of money, finances, material blessings only. Yes, but not only. Luke 12, 15, the words of Jesus Christ. And he said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness for a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. So I said earlier saying sometimes money answers but answers wrongly. What the Lord designed for us to enjoy is what I call total life prosperity. Shalom. Nothing missing. Broken. Lacking or wanting. It will surprise you how it is if somebody could pay a million dollars to just live for six hours, they'll pay for it. Ask the late Michael Jackson. He could pay to get sleep. Why? Demons. Demons were pounding his head and harassing him just to get a moment's sleep, to just get an escape from those demonic attacks. He could pay anything. The blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow. We must not despise the things that seem free because we didn't pay for them. But you wake up, your legs are working, your hand is moving, you can blink up and down multiple times per day, breathe in and out. That's prosperity. That's abundance. More than the rich who have no peace. I tell you something. The so-called rich also cry. The greatest point of prosperity is when a man turns his life sincerely, totally, completely to Jesus. Your spirit is saved. The rest is a matter of time. Ah, yeah. ah, so we see, and I just want to throw this just to begin to close, that there are two aspects of prosperity. Number one, 
the God factor in prosperity. We saw that God was with Joseph. He prospered. But we also see something. I want to emphasize this so that I won't leave you thinking it's only one thing that is needed to prosper. The Bible talks about keys of the kingdom. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Matthew 16. In the words of Jesus to Simon Peter. I give unto you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever doors, whatever, whatever doors you open shall be open, and so on and so forth. The point is, the kingdom of God is powered by keys and principles. Oh, yeah, please listen. Let's cap this now. I want to throw this at you. There are two aspects of Jesus. Number one, there is Jesus, the prince. Say with me, the prince. All right. When we talk about Jesus the Prince, we talk about him as our Savior. How we got born again. But there's another aspect of Jesus called Jesus the Principles. Oh yeah. So if you have the Prince without the Principles, you can be born again, heaven bound, but not enjoy the kingdom maximally. Am I here? Praise God. Unfortunately, some people have stolen the principles of the king, Islam, Buddhism, name it. And by their principles, they've stolen from the kingdom. They are applying it and it's working. If you don't believe, go to Dubai. They're not born again. But they're doing exploits. Principles. <laughs> no, but there is being tongues in Dubai. Things are working principles. But we have the opportunity to know the prince, be born again, but also not be ignorant about the principles. Are we here? Alright, let's go further. So I think we've settled the issue of Christ the prince. We're born again. He's with us. We know that. We're prospering as it were. But God expects us to not only engage the spiritual dimension of prosperity, higher, only, it's important, it's primary, but to also engage the natural principles, the laws of prosperity. I want to belabor the spiritual principles of tithing, giving, um, serving, confessing the scripture. You know, I want to just quickly zero in on what I call the natural dimension of prosperity. I think it's important to emphasize it because many tend to oversize, overemphasize one beyond the other. Some are all spirit, 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 spirit. Others are just walk, walk, walk. No, there's a balance. So let's look at a few things that deal with the natural dimension. If you will prosper and be a prosperous man. You know, we look at things like diligence, hard work, excellence, faithfulness. Number one, Diligence. If you're going to prosper, my dear brothers, thank God for the hand of God on your life and the oil poured on your head. If you're going to see the spiritual blessing in heaven translated materially and concretely, there are things, listen, we must know and there are things we must do. Know and do. There are keys. One of which is Engage in diligence. Diligence and hard work. Proverbs twenty two twenty nine. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men or ordinary men. Look at the AMPC. Amplified Classic. Do you see a man diligent and skillful in his business? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before obscure men. So diligence in every endeavor, carpenter, driver, doctor, banker, lawyer, listen, it will distinguish you amongst the rest. You can speak in tongues all you want to speak in tongues. Diligence is a necessity to translate your spiritual blessings according to Ephesians 1.6. We've already been blessed to with every spiritual blessings, heavenly blessings, gracious. But if you want to see it here, diligence, hard work. Number two, 
we must engage the spirit of excellence. Excellence. To excel above the norm. To go beyond the mediocre. Don't just serve based on what you're paid. Go the extra mile. Ah, yeah. A man called Daniel was lifted because of the spirit of excellence. Daniel 6, 2 and 3, AMPC. And over them three presidents of whom Daniel was one, that these satraps might give account to them and that the king should have no loss or damage. Then this Daniel was distinguished above the presidents and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king fought to set him over the whole earth. Excellence is not money. No, sir. Excellence in my definition is striving to be your best within your means at every point in time. With your two pair of trousers, three shirts, my goodness. Each time you appear, appear like you're coming out of some Vogue magazine. Why? You've washed and ironed it. Who knows it's two or three? It's a spirit of excellence. Guess what? Excellence attracts excellence. An excellent banker will attract excellent customers. An excellent doctor will attract excellent doc uh, clientele. An excellent preacher. Look at the lights. Look at high road. Uh, you will draw excellent people. Mediocrity attracts mediocrity. Excellence. Excellence. In our country, say, you know me, you know me, you go manage them at all, at all. No, you mean. Go and service your car. Go, 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 go and service it. You know me. I no, your guy, you know me, you know me, you know me. You mean. Until the thing fall down and scatter. Excellence. <laughs> Number three, to prosper. Natural principles. Faithfulness. Proverbs 20 verse 6. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. Hear this? But a faithful man who can find. That means faithful men tend to be scarce. It's true. You know Jesus spoke about two things in the power of talent. Ta talent. He says, thou good and faithful servant. So you can be good member of GLA. Not the faithful member of GLA. You're a good member. You show up. But are you faithful? Praise God. Faithful. Faithful in another man's matter. Faithful in small. Faithful in money. Three levels of faithfulness. Proverbs 20 verse 20, 28, 20. 28, 20. May the Lord make us both good and faithful servants. In Jesus' name. A faithful man shall abound with blessings. You know? Blessings. Faithful man. They're tied together each other. But he that maketh haste to be rich shall not be innocent. Number four. God. I like this one. God is committed to blessing the works of our hands. All right, you're blessed. You have the oil jumping upon you. They've laid down upon you. Listen, 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 listen. There must be something you have for him to bless. Listen. Psalm 1 verse 3 says, And it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth, do something, oh, recharge card is doing something. Sleeping is not doing anything. Hmm? Washing car is something. Do you know that by, by just engaging in, in just washing cars, that someday you can stumble into somebody's car that will lift you up, but you won't find that person in your bedroom complaining there's no job, no job, no job, no job, no job. Do something. Wife is in the bank, sweating, bring salary. She go buy food, can't cook, can't serve you. You cross your leg, can't chop up with remote control, DSTV, sports, euro, euro, sports, 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 sports. Bam, 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 bam. That's not a man of honor. Bam, bam, bam. That's not honorable. Do something. Can't drive Uber. Do something. You know, it's honorable to go and earn 20,000 naira. Bring something. That you bring nothing, just cross your leg. My wife, my wife, my wife, my wife. Your wife, what? 
by the time <laughs> by the time your hand starts feeding you or your wife is feeding you consistently and she does it joyfully and cheerfully and you don't feel any how ah you're not a man of honor <laughs> ah I'll feel somehow oh no 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 I'll feel somehow do something just by, just by stepping up the four leper said why do we sit here to die do something you, okay I know you're, you're a doctor you're a lawyer you're a banker it's, it's beyond your pay grade start somewhere let God see you're willing to do something he's committed to blessing the works of our hand I've seen people with MBA driving Uber because it's honorable to walk in their mind, Abba, just stay at home. Let me do something. Men of honor, shout a big amen. amen. Finally, number five. He that does not walk, no go chop. No walk, no chop. Uh -huh. Write that one. We'll be closing very shortly. No walk, no chop. <laughs> Mama, am I correct? No walk, no chop. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, if I had time, I would have closed with what I, I, I wrote here. God's warnings in scripture about money and prosperity. Um, but I don't want to abuse the time you've graciously given me. Um, I've only taken the liberty because of my relationship to go beyond a few minutes. But I won't abuse that. But suffice to say, my brothers, um, there are many scriptures that tell us how, what's the word now? How dangerous it can be to handle money riches without a balance. One of which is, what will it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? One of which is, man cannot serve God and mammon. One of which is, we're not to be covetous. And so on, so on, and so on in scripture. We're warned that the love of money is the root of all evil. It's all there. So that as we go about with this mission to prosper, and there are many reasons why you should prosper, by the way. He wants you prosperous. He wants you to be a part of extending the kingdom of God with the blessing upon your life. So on and so forth. The kingdom is powered by the anointing, but believe you me or not, money. It is said, anointing without money can lead to annoyance. Ask your apostle when he comes, he will tell you. <laughs> Let me say it again so you can hear very well. Though. I'm a preacher. <laughs> Bros, anointing without money can lead to annoyance. When God gives you a vision to take the world and there's no pepper, it is, it's painful. It's painful. So you must prosper. So your organ will not be annoyed. <laughs> when the vision comes, there's a provision for it. Because the men of honor are prospering. Rise on your feet. Let's thank the Lord for one minute. Lift your voice. M-O-H. Shall we bless the Lord for being real men of honor in the house? Let's pray for one or two minutes and just thank him for the honor, for the honor, for the honor, for the honor. To be called men of honor. The Bible says no man takes his honor to himself but he whom the Lord called as priest. Lift your voice and thank him. Thank him. Ask the Lord for grace to live these words, to not be a hearer only, but to be a doer. Determined to go back and hear this message again and again. Receive grace to be a doer, a doer, a doer. Father, we're thanking you. Lord, I thank you for the men executive. I thank you for the entire men in this great ministry, GLA. May your good hand be renewed upon them in this season. Oh, Sabila, Tamano, Tokupa, Lakata. Let true husbands rise amongst them. Men of integrity, men of character. Oh, those who are running into politics and governance, let them stand out amongst their peers. The businessmen, let them experience your favor from this hour. Ano Sakapa, grant them grace to be people of integrity and character. People who love you above beyond all else. 
people who make the king and his kingdom first oh man lift your hands lift your voice and thank the lord thank the lord thank the lord receive grace to take your place in this house declare and declare nobody will take your place in gla stand up stand out rise up and do that what god called you to do oh yes lord yes lord yes lord father i thank you we just give you the praise we just give you the glory grace upon us to be hearers and doers of your word in jesus name we pray you have just experienced the preaching and teaching ministry of good heart obi ekweme lead pastor of revival house of glory international church rajik and the apostolic leader of the horn of revival ministry H-O-R-M, a global outreach ministry mandated to carry the torch of revival across cities and nations. If you would like to ask a question, share your prayer request or testimony, or get more messages or books from Goodheart, please call or text 0805-223-4444 or email info at rogic.org. Also, Download the Horn of Revival Ministry app on Google Play or Apple Store to connect with a variety of free quality resources including Rogic Radio and our refreshing daily devotions to take you higher in life. Keep hearing the Word of God. It will produce intimacy with His Spirit for uncommon encounters on the earth.